I have generated over $5 million with just Performance Max campaigns alone, both for my brands as well as client brands under my Google Ads agency, Euro Marketing. And in this video, I'm going to reveal a new strategy I just found out about when it comes to Performance Max campaigns. Before we dive in deep into the actual new way of running PMAX campaigns, I want to go over the exact way which I always have been recommending when it comes to finding success with Performance Max campaigns. And this has been by segregation of products. What I would usually recommend is segregating your products into different performance max campaigns. Maybe have one where it's one collection and the other one where it's another collection and then maybe have a third PMAX campaign where it's just all of the losing products, so on and so forth. Keep in mind, this segregation strategy still applies, but this new approach takes segregation to a whole new level. You are basically taking all of the different campaigns you would launch and you instead of just kind of distributing your budget across five different PMAX campaigns, you are now kind of segmenting all of these products inside maybe one or two maximum of three and you're segregating the products out still via asset groups. The perfect example of it is this brand right here, which we have started working with recently during the earlier portion of June. And this brand so far is currently generating around $500,000 every single month and we're applying this exact strategy to this pmax campaign now if we go inside this pmax campaign go on over to asset groups the first thing you will see that there's seven different asset groups right here and some of them of course are not currently running because we did apply this strategy previously we tested certain things we found out what is not working and we ended up pausing these asset groups but essentially the way that this strategy works is instead of having multiple different PMAX campaigns per different collection or per different product type, you instead want to segregate out your different product collections into their own asset group. So right here at the top, there's four different asset groups which are currently running or were running during this specific given month. And all four of these resulted in kind of different results from each other. The first one, which was basically getting majority of the ad spend is doing the best, has 21 sales at a 5x ROAS. The second one, which is not doing the best, but it still has a decent ROAS of 4.99. Third one, three sales at 5.39x ROAS, so on and so forth. But the thing is, within this campaign right here, if we go on over to products, we can see that there's a total of 3,000 different products and SKUs within this campaign. Now, normally, I would have said that this is way too much, this is not a good strategy, so on and so forth, but this strategy is fine here. These products are fine here because of the different asset groups we have running. So as you can see right here, a lot of these products, it says an active asset group paused. And that is because some of these asset groups we have already paused because they were not getting results. The way this strategy works and what you should be trying is whatever the type of segregation you want to be going about with, maybe it's different collection, maybe it's best selling products versus the losing products, whatever the case is, put them in their own asset groups and you don't necessarily have to choose any images you don't have to choose any signals even this strategy is working across multiple different brands across multiple different niches because there are three major benefits to it the first benefit is it keeps the data on the account level stored individually within those campaigns instead of distributing and segregating out that data because the more distributed out the data is the harder it is for each individual campaign to actually use it and take advantage of it. The second kind of biggest benefit of this strategy is it helps the campaign optimize faster because now instead of having maybe four to five different pmax campaigns which have all of this 750 dollars a day budget distributed amongst them you can now have maybe one or two pmax campaigns where alone they're running at such a high budget and because of that google's algorithm is able to quickly go through the assets if you have any go through these products test them and figure out what's a good product versus what's not compared to if you had like four or five different campaigns where the budgets are low so now it has to do a lot of extra work and if you accidentally ended up putting the same product in multiple campaigns well now you start bidding against yourself and there's just too many extra problems that come about with that the third benefit of this is it helps you keep the campaign restrictions 
low because now since you have so many different types of asset groups running this campaign is now forced to go out and find your ideal audience amongst a big pool of audience members and to make that happen you will ultimately need to lower the restrictions maybe not have any target ROAS running or maybe have low bids if you do this with a standard shopping campaign and all of that stuff so this strategy really is kind of opening the pathway to now reach a deeper level of audience which you might not have been able to if you had just done that segregation route but again if you're doing forty thousand dollars or more per month in revenue you need just a little bit of extra help healing your brand to the next level go on to my website at yourmarketing.com and book a free call with me to see how we can work together and make that happen